Hi everyone, this is Abhinav from Phonebunch and today we are reviewing the Asus Zenfone 2. Now this is a ZE551ML variant with 2 gigs of RAM and 1080p display. Now I know this review has been delayed quite a lot, actually I was supposed to do it back in May when I recorded this video, but it slipped through our review cycle. Anyways, things haven't changed really, it's the same phone, the competition has gotten a bit tougher with the Cray 3 Note launching pretty soon. Now this phone is powered by the Intel Atom Z3560 processor, clocked at 1.8 GHz. It's a quad core unit, 2 gigs of RAM, 13 megapixel rear, 5 megapixel front camera and a 5.5 inch full HD IPS display. Now let's have a look around the device. On the right just a space to open the back cover. At the top you have a very unfortunately placed power button, secondary noise cancellation mic, audio jack, there's nothing on the left of the device. At the bottom micro USB port and the primary microphone. Now you have a 13 megapixel rear camera, dual tone LED flash. Now the volume buttons at the back, it has good tactile response. It is a bit smaller than LG's and you can see this tapered design at the back. It has been made to look like metal, but it's made out of plastic. In the front, actually the design is pretty similar to previous Gen Zenfone models. You do have NFC baked into the device. The backer itself is quite solid. You have a 3000 milliampere non removable battery, a micro SD card slot and two micro SIM card slots. The first one accepts 4G SIM cards. Now the volume buttons at the back are still better to use than the top mounted power button. Coming to the front, you have a 5 megapixel camera, proximity light sensors along with the notification LED and unfortunately you have capacitive buttons again which don't light up. A 5.5 inch full HD 1080p IPS display resides here with Corning Gorilla Glass protection. The viewing angles are actually pretty wide. Now the colors really don't look that great on this display. It's not that vivid. Moreover, it's really not that bright. So sunlight legibility is actually not that great over here. Moreover, the Corning Gorilla Glass layer is very reflective, but you can play with the color temperatures which does help to an extent. Now Asus has also gratified the Zenfone 2 with a 100 UI mode so you can just double tap the home button and you get into this 100 UI mode where you can shift it around, reduce the size of the display as well. Now we didn't have any major issues with network or call quality. Now I've heard of dropped calls but we didn't have any such issues. The speakerphone is loud enough during calls as is the main earpiece. Call recording is also baked in and it does work out quite well. Now you do have NFC baked in as I have already told you, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth as well as USB tethering also work well, GPS as well as navigation work quite fast on this device. Coming to the rear camera, there's a 13 megapixel pixel master unit, it captures images rather quickly. Now macro shots do take a little bit of time to focus in, there are several modes available over here. You have your panorama, GIF animation, selfie, low light, just quite a lot. There's a separate manual mode available too, where you can control ISO, exposure, white balance as well. I'll have a separate camera review for this device and a comparison with some of the other smartphones. Now color reproduction is a bit oversaturated and sometimes over processed, but images still turn out quite well from this camera. They are sharp on the brink of being over sharpened. But when you are sharing these images, they look lively, very vibrant as well. And you can see these 100% crop images, quite a lot of detail over there. Even distant shots do turn out well. Color reproduction generally is pretty good. You can also play around with the manual mode and get pretty good looking images. Now low light imaging is just about decent. There is quite a lot of noise in images and images tend to have a much more colder tone when it comes to low light. The flash definitely helps. It brings about a more natural tone. It is white in color. Now you can see the low light mode in action on the right, but you have to have very steady hands to get a clear shot. Now, as I said, the flash does help. It doesn't overexpose images. The front facing camera too takes decent shots but it's really not as good as the Mi 4i. Now you can record 1080p videos with the rear camera and video quality generally turns out quite well. Have a listen to the audio. Exposure control is good over here and the quality is pretty decent. This is the default music player over here. You do have an equalizer built in. Now speakerphone is really not that loud but still it gets the job done. It is not tinny but doesn't offer that amount of bass as well, moreover it's located at the back. 
you do have FM radio built into the device as well. It works well. I haven't had any issues with network reception. FM recording is not available. Now video playback is again very smooth on the device. You can see it right here. We are playing a 1080p video. No lag whatsoever. You can move around the video very quickly. No ghosting or freezing. Actually the performance of the device is very good. There is no lag, no stutter anywhere in the UI or while doing multitasking. Now we are playing a video over YouTube. It's our unboxing of the LG G4. And you can again see streaming video plays quite well. We were playing in 1080p. Coming to software, this phone is running Asus Zen UI on top of Android 5.0 Lollipop. And the performance is very smooth over here. You can see this app drawer. There's a just too many apps that have come pre-installed. Quite a lot of bloatware on this device, but thankfully you can uninstall some of these apps. Doctor Safety, Clean Master and a lot of those actually. Now there are some options to customize the interface. You can change the home screen animations. You can group folders based on the type of apps that you have. There is theme support baked in as well. So you can customize quite a lot on this device. Now to save you from using that power button, you have double tap to wake and double tap to sleep available on the device. They are really very necessary. Now you have a notification toggles right up top, quite a lot of them actually. Very useful and you can go ahead and customize these as well. Now you can see right here Android 5.0 Lollipop, which is very fluid to work on this device. Now you have about 11 odd gigs available out of that 16 gig when you get the device. USB OTG is also supported over here and you can choose prefer install location as external storage to move all your apps and app data to external SD card. And you can see we have quite a lot of free RAM available but there are plenty of apps running in the background. Multitasking was no issue for this device. It doesn't kill apps quickly. Moreover, screen binning is also available over here. You do have multiple user accounts available too. Now, as I've already said, performance is actually pretty good on this device. There is no lag, no stutter, and that continues into web browsing as well. Scrolling is smooth, pinch to zoom works very well. Images and text render very quickly as well. And Asus has packed some very useful apps. You have do it later. So just shake your device so the task that you are on currently, it gets saved into your to-do list and you can continue reading from where you left it. You have a kids mode baked in as well. You can choose which apps your kids can use and for which duration. It's protected by your password so your kids won't be able to access the admin settings and they won't be able to leave this space as well until you want them to. Now, another cool feature is snap view. So by just using your default password or pattern, you can enter your regular mode where you have all your apps. And then if you enter a different pattern, you enter into snap view. The pattern can be chosen by you. And this has a completely separate app space as well as data space, which cannot be accessed by the regular user. And you can simply jump back to the default one. Now, along with general performance, gameplay was good on this device as well. There was no issue with multitasking, all games played well, no frame drops whatsoever in gaming. Moreover, this phone didn't heat up that much as we have seen phones within this price segment to do. Now coming to battery life, I was able to get about 3 to 3.5 three hours of screen on time with optimized mode on. Now that battery life is actually pretty decent for a 5.5 inch 1080p display. Now you have a customized mode as well. You can choose that to get more out of the device. Well, folks, that was a full review of the Asus Zenfone 2. Now this is priced at about rupees 15,000. For that, you are getting a very good smartphone. It's not a bargain, definitely, but it has great performance, some very useful apps in Zen UI. The build is pretty solid on the device as well. It does look quite good. The only thing I don't like is the placement of the rear mounted buttons as well as the top mounted power button. But apart from that, it's actually a very decent device. The display does look quite good. I wish that it was slightly brighter. But again, at this price, Asus gets the basics right with the Zenfone 2. Good cameras, good display, great performance and good build quality as well. We'll be back with more. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions about the Zenfone 2 or any other device, do mention those in the comment section. And as always, have a great day.